We slept well that night and woke up to a beautiful day. One of those mornings where you don't want to rush things. It may have been just another routine morning, but nothing was ordinary in this place. Good morning, this is day 16, and we are at probably the most exciting part of this trip. And we are presently at the edge or the lip of the goat, goat portage. This is a characteristic of this trip that I've kind of really, uh, was kind of for me, like the driving force to come here and see this uh, and, and experience it as well. Uh, besides, of course, the canyon and the beauty of the falls and everything, but it was this challenging portage that I really wanted to experience. And we're right here now. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to show you what we're dealing with. If you look down, it's quite the steep drop. It literally drops like vertically down to different ledges. And uh, you can see the climbing rope that's been set up here. So there's one here. I'm going to get my finger in here. That one is what people use to climb up or down because there's knots in the rope. This other one here is a static line and it's tied to this tree up here as well as that one. And that's the line that we're going to use to rig the canoe and our gear and lower it down to the landings down below. And if you look down there, I'm going to zoom in here. I wonder if it, there you go. So you can see that blue line that goes down underneath the cedar tree and it kind of uh, anchors down somewhere there. But there's actually another rope right by my fingertip, another one that goes down that way. So there's two sets of ropes that we'll have to bring our gear down. And Ben here is busy setting up our system. We've been discussing this in the morning on how we were gonna rig our system to lower this stuff down. So we've got a throw bags, we got our pin kit, we got webbing, we got uh, Prusix, we've got uh, belay device, even, even uh, pulleys. So what we're gonna do is rig it so that we can lower all our gear down this static line safely so that the other person down below can get it. Now it's going to be a little challenging uh, to try to film it with just two, two of us but uh, I'm going to do my best to try to capture as much of it as possible so that you can see and uh, see what we're doing. So wish us luck and uh, like I said, let's see how this, uh, this all goes. So this is why I'm not sure if the pulley is going to be working that great because it's kind of... Well, it will once it's off those rocks, right? Yeah. But now, we're going to have to go knock it down. Yep. Going down through? Yeah. It's always, it's catching on a ledge, but... With one attachment point at the top of the barrel and through a pulley, it didn't work that great. Stuck? Yep, there he goes. Is at the bottom? Uh, no. It's, it's almost at the cedar tree. So we just came down to the bottom of the goat portage. We uh, got one barrel down. But look at the view here. This is the cliff that we've been uh, coming down off of. Quite stunning and quite high pretty sheer all the way up so I'll take you up and show you what we're dealing with so it's kind of in the shadows here you see that there's a tree down here but you can see this path is well worn by a lot of people coming through here and if we go up here you can see some old frayed rope all coming apart but uh, it's at the end, but you don't really want to rely on it. So if you look all the way up, you see Ben climbing. And that's kind of like from Ben's point, that's like the steepest section because it goes pretty much just right down. And the rest here, it's pretty much, um, it might still be a little challenging with a canoe, but, the, but you can certainly do it with a pack or a barrel because it's got a lot of steps. But uh, up there, it's definitely a lot more challenging. For the second barrel, we attached it at both ends, one to the static line and the second to the belay line. We also switched out the pulleys for carabiners. Letting the prussic slide, yeah. and then as soon as I'm worried, I just let go and it will lock. So it stopped because it's on a ledge again. So I'm going to have to go down. Okay. 
So, second barrel down, midway. We uh, had two points of uh, uh, where it was attached, one to the, the static line and the other one to the, the line that we're, we're blaying the barrel down. And it worked a lot better. So I unclipped it from the static line from there, allowing me to drop it down to here, which, amount, which makes it a lot easier because I've got a lot more even footing here to get the barrel off and take it down the rest of the way. For the pack, we used two attachment points to the static line and attached the belay line to one of them. This system worked the best. He's caught on that branch. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go down and release it. Uh, you want to? Okay, so we've got uh, the two barrels, the packs, and all the little accessories down the down the goat portage. Now we're gonna hit the most challenging thing, which is a canoe. As you can see right over here. So what we're gonna do is attach a couple carabiners to the the grab loops on either end, and bend behind me there is gonna. Um, lower it down with this belay device and uh, he's also got a prusk on it just to make sure that it doesn't get away and there's also a locking knot at the end. We're going to try to make it down halfway and then there's a tree in the way, there's a cedar tree and we're going to unclip from one end, clip it to the other rope and then slide it down further and then, and then clip the other end which is the stern end to the other rope and then continue sliding it down. Uh, it will be a little more tricky than the barrel and the, and the pack but we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. But it's been fun so far. Now, it was time for the canoe. I'm taking the slack, so. but it's going to slide quick. So yep. here, let me uh, lock this one okay. and come to give you a hand. Now, let's take a step back and give you a different perspective. Prusik is a damn good system. It's locking in place. How about a split perspective? Now we gotta go to small. Okay, so I'll go down. Yep. Ready? Here was the tricky part. Ben and I had to coordinate our movements without being able to see each other as I had to release the one end of the canoe, still support it, and attach it to the other side of the static rope. If I slipped or lost balance in transit, I could easily fall. Okay, yep. Okay. Good. 
Okay. A little bit lower? Yep. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna unclip. Okay, hold on. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this one's gonna be harder. Okay, you want me to come down? Hold on. I got it. Nice. Okay, hold on a sec. Once we got past the ledges and tree, the second part went much smoother. Stop right there. At the end of the belay rope, we then unclipped the canoe and carried it safely the rest of the way down. Okay. Is your big fan going to get in your I way? I don't want this to be the cause of my destruction. <laughs> For the last climb, I thought I'd give you a better perspective of what it takes to get down. It really is vertical. So Ben and I just finished the goat portage. Hey Benny boy, yep. successful. We got everything down in one piece. It was fun, challenging, but uh, it was good. It was definitely worth coming here just for the goat portage, right? Yep. Nothing else is worthwhile. <laughs> not not the pickerel, not the falls, not the canyon. Just the goat portage. Don't you like him with his new sunglasses? Hey, yeah, uh, look at the scene behind me. There's a nice big uh, cliff all the way up there behind me. So we're just going to continue down. There's a set of rapids right there, and you'll be, we'll be able to see the uh, the falls coming off from the big pool above. So we're going to check that out, and we're going to take a lunch right at the campsite there. Are we on? Yep. Here's a view of the last and seventh sister from the campsite. What a view. It was finally time to leave the seven sisters and the goat portage once and for all. But what an incredible experience. So, <laughs> Ben, you want to tell us what you're doing? I'm walking Portage Trail for not reason. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we are just on the other portage that bypasses that big falls. Um, so this would be the one opposite the goat portage. So this one's supposed to be better, and uh, but they still said the footing is pretty uh, rough. But so far, so good. It's a little longer than the other one. This one's 250 meters, and the other one is, I think, 175 meters. We just wanted to check it out and see how bad or how good it is. This section was certainly more difficult but really pretty. Certainly is not great walking. The top of the trail is at the lip of that cliff and is only a bit further along to the water beyond. And we're already there, so it's actually not a bad trail. I mean, 
There is a lot of boulders, uh, but I think the footing is good. Um, the only problem is that uh, Ben mentioned that if it was wet, it'd probably be a little slick, but otherwise, it's not bad at all. And it's a lot easier than the goat portage. We were talking, Ben and I were talking about bringing our significant others here, but saying that there's no way we could do it with a goat portage because they're both scared of heights. Well, I think this would be definitely a way to get them up here to see this place. Right, Ben? Yes. <laughs> Is he making funny faces? No, I'm not. I was just saying yes. All right. You can see the cliffs that line the, the lake. Yep. Okay, we'll get back down. We are on Wigwasan Lake now. Uh, we've got about four more kilometers till our last official rapids of the trip. There's, uh, we just finished running a technical class two from a no-name lake to this one. And uh, we were able to run it cleanly. So we've got a little more paddling to do. And then after the next set of rapids, uh, will bring us into Bukamika Lake and uh, we're going to camp there. Then tomorrow is just going to be a short paddle out, probably about four or five kilometers. And we're supposed to meet our uh, Matisse Lake outfitters to pick us up and take us into Armstrong. Beautiful day, it's hot, uh, but we're uh, looking forward to getting to camp and having a cooling swim. That's what we really need because we're hot. Ben still trying to catch a fish. The equalizing fish. Yeah, we have this competition going on, and I'm still ahead by three points. So, huh? Two points. Oh, yeah, yeah, Pike. Sorry, Pike. Yeah, three, uh, two points. So if he can catch a walleye, a pickerel, pickerel, he can equalize it. But uh, he hasn't been successful today, so. Or a three-foot pike, and then I get three points. Yep. We finally arrived at the last rapid of the trip, and it did not disappoint. It was both long, technical, and it gave us a good surprise at the end. Start going right? Yep. A little bit left. Yep. Not too much because that big rock. Okay. Yep. Maybe a little bit to the right, more right. Yep. I don't think you're gonna make it. Yeah. Woo! Made it. Oh, it's going, right? 
Ja. Ja. Yeah. Yep. Looks like this is the last one. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Was big. Yeah. <laughs> Everything got sprayed. <laughs> wow. We planned to stay at the campsite just below the rapids, but we didn't like it and continued on. We ended the day much closer to the end, but preferred this cozy little campsite. That night, we cooked supper for the last time and reminisced back on the past 16 days as we ate supper and watched the sun set. The trip was indeed nearing its end. One more coffee with breakfast, and it was soon time to go. So, good morning. This is the last day of the trip, day 17. Day 17. Yeah, and uh, we've just been harassed by mosquitoes, and it helped us to get off camp a little faster, but we just got a little paddle before we uh, get to the parking lot where Matisse Lake Outfitters will be picking us up. So the trip was pretty good success, I would say. Mm -hmm. Other than a few things that we lost. <laughs> ben had took the biggest hit, of course, with his iPhone. Uh, but uh, fishing was great. The rapids was great. The scenery was amazing. And the bugs, despite the fact that they're, they're a little pain in the ass today, has been really good. Yeah, so, okay. So let's uh, head to the takeout. We met Don, the owner of Matisse Lake Outfitters, who was going to shuttle us to Armstrong. Okay. Unfortunately, we just bought a bunch of Kevlar's, but they just don't last, do they? Uh, no, but that's what everybody wants now, unfortunately. It was quite evident this access point was well used. Mm -hmm. We were soon on the road chatting with Don and learning about the history of Matisse Lake Outfitters. They had quite the sweet setup with multiple planes. We then paid for the shuttle before we headed to the town of Armstrong. We booked into the local motel and cleaned up as we enjoyed our first hot shower in over two weeks. We then enjoyed some delicious fresh meals from the only two restaurants in town. Some of the time was spent walking around Armstrong and meeting locals while getting a sense of what the town was like. And then it was finally time to board the train for our long trip home. It was another long ride in the train, even longer due to some delays. But we eventually arrived back home in the land of concrete and steel, far from the boreal forest, from where it all began. 